This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So maybe it's because I'm a little Halloween goblin, but ever since becoming an adult, I have found it very difficult to get excited about Christmas. But I really am trying to change that and put some of my humbug attitude behind me. And you know what says, I am very excited for the Christmas season. I am all in on this more than an ugly Christmas sweater. Christmas sweaters are the most elevated art form of the last 200 years. I have never seen a garment convey so much at once. Spirit of joy, celebration, the grotesque over-commercialization of this once quaint holiday, all wrapped up in this gorgeous polyester vessel. Now that's what I call art. <laughs> so I, as you could probably guess, don't own a Christmas sweater because I'm a little fuzzy, bashful, green gentleman. You see, unlike this guy, I'm not much of a sweater person, but what I am is a corset person. I would like to make an ugly Christmas corset. And I don't even know what that would look like. So for this design, I was initially just planning on making a corset and those plants as usual did go overboard. So for the moment, ignore the other clothing items that are going on on screen here. But for the corset itself, I got a really cute fabric that I wanna use for the base. And then I wanna add some red ribbons for the straps and some of the trim, kind of make it look a little bit like a present. And then I wanna paint some kind of Christmas themed tapestry design on the front panel, make it almost look like one of those Vivian Westwood tapestry corsets, but a Christmas version. I wanna keep this bodice relatively simple. I'm mainly here just to get that center column so that I can paint on it and make it look pretty and everything. And I also don't have any of those like more Renaissance style bodices. Most of them are like this and they close in the front. But the pattern that I'm going to use for this is the Ren Faire bodice pattern that is from corsetpatternmaker.com. And this is especially cool because it's a website that kind of generates a pattern for you. You can put your measurements in and it will generate different corset patterns based off of your exact measurements. That way you don't have to draft them yourself throw them in there and print it out and then you can make it yourself. This pattern is actually what this corset is. I meant to put out a video on this and then I never did, but it's very cute and I like it. This so. particular pattern is free. So I will put a link to this in the description. The folks who run corsetpatternmaker.com are also friends of the channel. So if you wanna use any of their other patterns, I will have a discount code for you in the description. That way you can get a custom pattern and get some money off. Again, this isn't sponsored. I just think it's super useful. Okay, bye. But before I get to work on this, we do have just one little problem. As mentioned before, I'm a little stinky Krampus creature and you know this side of my basement is looking mostly real sad there's that there's that next to the television but that's it I don't even have my Christmas tree up I literally have my little Christmas tree box on the floor just waiting to be put up and assembled it's okay this is a step in my Grinch recovery program we're gonna put this up and make the space festive before I get to work on this I also need to change into something that's a little bit more decorating appropriate so let's do that that's better. Do you guys enjoy the cozy ambiance that I have going on here? So since this is my sewing room decor setup, I don't exactly have the most impressive tree, uh, nor the most impressive ornaments, but you know, it just, it makes the space feel a little bit more festive. It makes me feel all giddy inside whenever I'm mowing down zombies while playing The Last of Us. I hope these Christmas lights still work, otherwise I'm gonna be pissed. I love a tree that I can manhandle like that. Okay, I do hate to cover up the most festive decorations of all, but here we go. It's okay, swords. You'll have your time again. Don't even worry about it. Gotta tuck it in for bed. Whenever I put this tree together a couple of years ago, I did it really on the cheap. I didn't really buy anything for this besides the tree itself, so I tend to trim this tree with a bunch of old little plushes and stuffed animals that I had whenever I was a little kid. We just sort of put them in there. I think it's a good use of some of these little guys. So I know it seems like I'm trimming this tree out of order and that's true because I couldn't find my box of other trimmings and I just did, so that's why. Okay, it's definitely more on the uh, cobbled together homemade side of the spectrum, but that's also the aesthetic of this channel. So I think it's fitting and I think it's really cute. So in terms of fabric for this project, I ended up thrifting all of this for about $2 at a local thrift store. It is literally just a huge cut of fabric. It's a little bit like a brocade, I guess. Look at the pattern. Wow. 
And the other great thing about it is it's stiff enough to where I can probably paint on top of it because girl, you know there's gonna be some acrylic paint going on fabric in this video. Oh, and I also got some matching trim and some tassels. The greedy peasant is influencing me. So this pattern is super simple. It is literally two pieces that are mirrored and I'm going to have this one laced down the back so that I can paint all over the front of this. So the front is going to end up basically being one giant piece. And then I'm gonna just put some boning in a couple of places to give it some structure. Probably a good bit of bones on the front and then some on the side seams and everything. But I'm gonna make it pretty comfortable and straightforward because I want to get to painting this. So the last time I made this corset, it took me literally just a couple of hours. So I'm gonna see how fast I can do this so that I can get to the fun part. Cause that's what I care about in this video. For the lining, I am going to be using some of this leftover red velvet fabric. I feel like it goes really well with this. I love it. <laughs> so few pieces I feel like this bodice pattern is probably the easiest I've ever worked with. You're kind of just sewing a lining and outer layer together. So to give it some structure I am adding some poning channels and adding a bunch of bones to it just with some zip ties because I'm cheap and it's what I had around. I'm then finishing that bottom seam with just a little bit of ribbon. That way it matches the ties that I'm going to add on later. This is what she was looking like so far and to finish up the back I added some bones to that as well. And then we get to my least favorite part of this entire process, which is adding in the grommets. And you can tell how much I love it because I'm just grumpy throughout the entire process. Wow, look at my vitriol for adding grommets. Anyways, I finished it up by adding some ribbons for straps, and this is what the finished bodice was looking like. But like I mentioned, I was only just getting started. <laughs> Can you already feel this project getting out of hand? But before we get too much deeper into this, uh, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is the world's largest online learning community with thousands of online classes and a vibrant creative community thirsty for knowledge. They have classes on illustration, sewing, videography, music production, and even career-focused topics like freelance, productivity, marketing and analytics, and so many more. Their classes are led by seasoned industry professionals with years of tangible experience ready to hydrate the masses. I am very much a hands-on learner. I want to replicate and experiment during the learning process, so I really love that Skillshare has a learn-by-doing approach to teaching where each member can create and then share a project after completing a class. And their platform also really emphasizes connecting teachers and members of the community. So teachers and peers can also leave feedback on your projects to encourage you and help you improve. And you can do the same for other members. So as I've been thinking about my 2024 goals, I have been dabbling a bit with my pipe dream of working on some kind of one-shot comic. And for that, I have been checking out how to successfully self-publish a picture book on Kickstarter with Mariana Lustosa. This class has a ton of great information on funding a long-term physical media project Project, like a comic. Another goal of mine in 2024 is to maybe suck less at graphic design. You know, I complain about it enough, so I should probably do something about it. And with Skillshare's new feature, Learning Paths, I can find curated lists of classes that are designed to help me level up in a specific skill category. So for graphic design, I am checking out Graphic Design Basics, Start Exploring and Expressing. And let me tell you what, these friendly faces are already making my graphic design fear just melt away. So if you'd like to check out Skillshare for free and dive into a new hobby or side hustle, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much as always to Skillshare for conspiring with me on this week's project. Now let's get back to it. Hello friends and welcome to day two, uh, otherwise known as the day where I get to put paint where it doesn't belong. At this point, the corset is completely done, which is wonderful. We love that. But as you probably saw me mention, I, as usual, got a little carried away with this week's project and I decided to make some other things. So while it is day two, it is nearing the end of day two because it took me this morning to finish those up. 
Here I was thinking they were gonna be just like quick little things that I can add on. It never is that way. I don't know why I keep thinking it is. It's incredibly misguided. You know what else is misguided? That. Hello? What do you have to say for yourself? Hey! <laughs> Come here. Come on. There we go. <laughs> She's been waiting for this all day. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to talk through this because the executive producer is currently clawing at my legs and it's a little bit painful, but you know, you guys have seen me sew things on the channel before, so I don't wanna emphasize that too much in this week's video because I know sometimes the sewing stuff gets a little repetitive. So instead I'm gonna summarize what I did to finish up the little bolero and then the skirt butt skirt thing I made. I don't know what it is. It's it's Full Metal Alchemist core. <laughs> Anyways, both were super simple processes. For the bolero, I just drafted out a super quick pattern on my mannequin. I did that with some uh, paper towels. Thank you, by the way, to the person in the comments who gave me that tip to use paper towels instead of fabric for draping stuff. I cut my fabrics out out of the same fabric that I am using for the corset for this project. I took the outer and lining layers, sewed them both together individually, and then sandwiched those together, wrong sides together, and sewed a Along the top seam so that I could get a nice crisp collar and then BAM I finished up the sleeves with a French seam. I made sure the cuffs at the end of the sleeve were finished off and all of that and then I pinned and sewed the sleeves onto the inside of the garment, finished that off with a little zigzag stitch, then finished off the rest of the garment just by flipping in all of the edges and then sewing that down. For the skirt I cut probably a quarter or a little bit more than a quarter circle skirt, drafted it the same way I draft any of those, you've seen me do that a million times. And I just hemmed the edges. I hemmed the bottom. I also added a little slit in the back just to add a little bit more swooshage. And then I finished it off with a little waistband that ties around my waist. That way I can wear it with different things. I can match it with the corset that I made. Kind of like a petticoat. Very versatile. I'm not gonna show you the full garments until the end of the video so that you have something to look forward to. Now, the main challenge is the fact that I have to get up and she's just very comfortable and I'm gonna feel so bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So now that the corset is done, we can get to the fun part of putting paint all over it. That's right, take your last gander everybody because in just a couple of hours, the front of this is going to be absolutely smothered in acrylic paint. I apologize in advance. This is probably going to be very painful for some of you. Honestly, it's it's gonna be a little bit painful for me too. I do like how this came out, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about putting paint where it doesn't belong. So, the main thing I have to think about at this point is what I am going to be painting on this corset because uh, I know I did some concept art at the beginning of this video fully intending to like paint that design on this but the longer this project has gone on, the more unsure I have become. Uh, my Libra tendencies are taking over just a little bit. But I have taken the liberty of just asking the Instagram audience what I should paint on this to see if they can give me some ideas. Let's see what the Instagram people have for me. Alrighty, we got a couple of suggestions for Krampus, which I am not at all opposed to. Holly leaves, intricate snowflakes, Krampus eating children, the festive goblin monster that hits kids with sticks. You guys have a Krampus fixation and it shows. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> Missile toaster. A mistletoe with toasters. Quickly accurate angels. That's a good one actually. Poinsettias, acorns and nuts, reindeer. Reindeer, rain, candles, snow, <laughs> the bones of all the bad children. <laughs> Y'all are evil, okay? <laughs> the three ghosts of a Christmas carol. Y'all are really into spooky Christmas. Pine cone, hot chocolate, Krampus, naturally, naturally. Josh Hutcherson. You guys have to stop sending me Josh Hutcherson things whenever I put up polls on Instagram. <laughs> Instead of making this course at Christmas themed, it's just... Absolutely loving the fact that that video is on my computer now. Geese with Santa hats. Frogs and Santa hats. Eerie looking mistletoe or holly. I think what you guys are ultimately trying to tell me is that you don't want this to be Christmas themed at all. You just want Halloween back and so do I. But listen, we're here. It's the holiday season. So we're, we're gonna do some holiday things. The executive producer is doing something that she does not need to do. Get down from there. Do you guys wanna see what she's doing right now? Hold on, just... Madam! <laughs> no, you did! 
did it. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's gonna do it again. Okay, pardon that rude interruption. Don't go back up there. Oh my god. Well, you know what they say, third time's a charm. I don't even know what I was saying before at this point. Two seconds later. Get back here. <laughs> you guys, I'm a terrible mother. <laughs> she won't stop doing it. Do you need to go to your room? So I think the general consensus. <laughs> I live in hell. You guys have given me some really great ideas. I really appreciate all the submissions and I wanted to include them on the channel because the last couple of times I asked for inspiration through Instagram, I did not do that. So thank you very much. I have to go deal with something, but let's finally get painting, shall we? <laughs> she just knocked over this PS2 controller. This is not how I raised you. That's... Oh my gosh. Listen, I'm reacting the way I am because she usually is not like this. Hey, if you keep doing this, Santa's not going to bring you any cat treats. Okay, so I think what I'm generally thinking for this is an amalgamation of random things, kind of like how I would do on the front of my sketchbook. I think I'm just going to sketch a bunch of random stuff and... Kind of see what sticks. All right, first of all, let's see. What does Krampus look like? Oh, he's so bashful. Oh, now that I don't care for. Merry Krampus. Excuse you. Is he really going to be the first thing we put on this corset? I don't think he needs to be the first thing. Let's do a reindeer first, just to like make sure it's not too demonic. I kind of like this. Oh, something tells me this is going to be incredibly difficult to draw and paint on. Okay, no turning back now. Let's do... Oh, it's... That's on there. That is a thing that is on there now. Okay, so I'm thinking we do a little deer. Yep. Yep, that is that is a sharpie going on this corset that I just spent several hours making. It's fine though. It's gonna look good. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna put paint on it. Don't even worry about it. You better watch out. I might add some more stuff depending on how maximalist I'm feeling, but I think this is what I'm gonna work with for now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, get painting. <laughs> So it turns out I was right and this particular fabric was pretty difficult to paint on but I tried my best to just block in all of the colors so that I could at least get some kind of surface to start working on top of. I think the main problem I encountered was this fabric just stayed really wet for a long time. It's not quite like painting on denim like I was hoping it would be where it dries pretty quickly. Instead it just stays wet and very transparent which was actually pretty good because it helped me to blend in a whole lot but it was not great for building up any kind of detail or layers of paint. Also, some of y'all are gonna be kind of upset because as a consequence of that, I did end up painting just some Holly over Krampus because I was not confident that I was going to be able to capture him with any amount of detail. I was a little concerned that he was just gonna look like a dookie stain, which I think would have ruined the vibes just a little bit. All right, folks, I'll be honest. It's uh, not looking too hot so far. I don't hate the composition of the piece or anything. It's just mostly that this fabric is kind of absorbing the paint in a super weird way. Like I've been layering and it's just been really hard to make the paint opaque. It seems to only get kind of opaque if I layer a bunch of white or a bunch of a really dark color. And this is definitely my fault. I should have totally like done a swatch test to see how this fabric would absorb paint, but I didn't do that because I was kind of in a hurry. So this is what I'm working with so far. Again, it's not terrible. It's just also not great. So if I can get things up to like this level of crispness. I think that'll work okay. I might have to like layer some areas with white so that I can make everything a little bit more opaque. We shall see. I'm gonna keep at this and try to make it work because uh, if I ruin this corset, I'm gonna be really mad at myself because I like how this was coming out before I put paint on it. But you know what? It's fine. This is just one of those moments where you really have to trust the process. It's, it's a process. That's all it is. And am I lying to myself? Yes, yes I am, because I am very worried and frazzled right now, but it's gonna be okay. Probably. 
I don't know. L let's try to figure this out. After recovering from my little mental breakdown over my dissatisfaction for how this corset was coming out, I collected myself and went back in, and I did start having some luck with this after bringing some Posca markers into the process. I got these recently for a different project that I wanted to do where I was gonna draw in some jeans, which is still something that I want to do. But they definitely came in handy for this in a couple of areas. They just helped me to get some crispness and also helped me to get paint down a little bit faster because this fabric is so absorbent. After a long time of just blocking in paint and trying to get things to be a little bit more opaque, I was finally able to go in and start adding a little bit more detail and shading and some actual lighting effects. And at that point, things started to come together a little bit more and my confidence was building. I think at this point, I knew this project was not going to be a complete failure, which was something that I was very worried about probably just an hour beforehand. <laughs> but after working on this piece for a couple of hours straight, I began to realize that I needed to finish this up whenever I had fresh eyes. The next day. Hello. As much as I wanted to finish the painting on this last night, it is now a new day. It just got too late and I needed fresh eyes to look at it to see if it was actually like even good. I think I'm getting a little bit closer at least. This is what it is looking like so far. It's definitely not done yet, but it's closer to what my goal was. It looks way better than it was looking last night whenever I was having my little breakdown about it. The main thing is still just trying to get detail is difficult, but it is coming out looking more like a, a blanket that was printed to have a design on it or a sweater that was, you know, knitted to have a design. So I think that's pretty close to what the goal is. So I'm gonna keep working on this and do just like a little bit more detail. And then I'm just gonna call it quits because at some point things have to be good enough. <laughs> Working on this the following morning was a heck of a lot more successful. I was right, I did need to let the fabric just fully dry a little bit so that I could actually layer paint up and make it fully opaque. So once I did that, I was able to add in way more detail and things were coming out looking a lot more crisp. All of the colors were kind of vibing. I'm, I'm very satisfied with the color palette of this piece actually. I think it was also fun to work under some of the limitations of this fabric because it forced me to work under a slightly different art style than usual and focus less on detail and focus a little bit more on like the harmony of the colors, adding clarity to the piece through the lighting, and focusing on adding detail to just like the focal points and the parts of the corset that I really wanted people to look at. That is something that I'm trying to work on with my painting overall because that is sort of the point of painting, trying to like draw the eye to specific areas and not necessarily giving every part of the painting the same level of detail. So it's like nice to see that improvement here, even though this is silly and I'm painting something stupid on a corset, right? Anyways, to fully finish this up, I just sewed some tassels onto the bottom sides of this corset and also onto the front collar of the little bolero. And with that, it is time for the reveal. And that's a wrap, both for this video and for a year of content in 2023. And I've gotta be honest, guys, I didn't expect this to come out well. <laughs> Whenever I was working on it last night, it was just looking like trash. I really was a little concerned, but I think it actually kind of pulled together in the end. I'm happy enough with it. I think this is also, frankly, a little bit helped by the fact that I went overboard and decided to make a little bolero and skirt to match it. It really feels like a complete look. If this made you even a little bit happy, then yay, I've done my job. <gasps> I am tired. So like I said, this is my final video of 2023. I'm taking a break next week, and then I'll probably be back the first week of January. Probably, hopefully. This little one also has been working so very hard, and she could also use a break. She's been doing so much producing, and I'm proud of her. <laughs> if you watched my videos this year, hey, thank you. <laughs> but as always, the biggest thank you for every single video that I've posted this year, and especially this video goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. You guys are great. 
I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> and so is she. Can you tell them how thankful you are? Let's see. See, she's so thankful. Bellfire 1053. Sama Lama MC Sama Sarah. Crimson Moon 04. Liana. Ermler Jean. Anubix. Breeza. Sony. Brian. Phoenix. Rose Draconi. Freedom and Gus Gus. Francesca Sliwa. Cat. Dodo. Zyle S. The Cat's Bark. Agent Dot Sketchy. Thea Maia. Lo Visa. Eloquent Silence. Megan Penland, Enozine, India Gloom, Hypnos, Katie, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, and Bean the Bread. Why are you doing this? And then before that, she knocked down this little fish. Why are you so full of hate this evening?